When it comes to alternate energy, solar, PV, and wind power get the most attention. But what would trucks, heavy machinery, and military equipment run on if Hawaii's oil supply was cut off? Pacific Biodiesel may have the answer. Well, even with the wonderful model of taking a waste product like used cooking oil and grease trap oil and turning it into a renewable fuel, there's only so much of that material in the islands. We have to look for another source, obviously. I mean, we're going to be capped out at about three to four million gallons a year, and the usage of just on-road diesel fuel in the state is somewhere around 50 million gallons a year. So the demand is there, the market is there, and we need another feedstock source. And part of what we've been doing to develop this is a, it's a partnership with the, Hawaii, with the military, the Army Corps of Engineers. We got some funding to do what we, a project called the Hawaii Military Biofuel Crop Project. Because we're working with the military, the main theme here is energy security. What could we do if we had a major disaster at our ports and we couldn't ship fuel in? Well, with our experimental crops, we are learning that within 100 days, we can have fuel from planting the seed to growing, to harvesting, and to processing the oil into biodiesel. I became involved in this project because um, I saw that this was an uh, excellent alternative crop, another resource, um, another item that local farms can take advantage of to diversify uh, their growing portfolio and to provide other, uh, hopefully, revenue streams for them. And also, at the same time, uh, helping Hawaii with finding another source of renewable energy. Hi, my name is Dan Radoy. I'm the farm manager for Pacific Biodiesel Technologies. We're here at a site in Wailua on the north shore of Oahu. Um, we're experimenting uh, with a few different oilseed crops um, to see what the viability is of growing them in the future here in, in Hawaii. I started farming a few years back in a nonprofit industry, uh, namely in Waianae, working with, with youth and working with um, some organic farms there. Um, last few years I've seen there's been a struggle to rehabilitate a lot of the land here on Oahu. Um, it's getting locked up in you know, land battles and, and certain political events. You know, I saw this project as an opportunity to open up some of those lands to make them available not only for biofuel production but for other farmers and for some other crops that may become profitable in the future. So this project started about two years ago. In 2011 and right now we're doing relatively small test trials of anywhere between 10 to 20 acres different crops uh, so we're looking at camelina safflower uh, soybean and also sunflower after we're doing the harvesting the other part of the project is developing a seed crushing facility and that's something that we're building right now uh, which is located just outside of Hilo and Keao uh, next to the Big Island Biodiesel plant. This field behind us here, we have about eight and a half acres of a crop called Camelina. Um, it's very popular in Europe. They grow up quite a bit. Um, there's some interest now in the United States with it, specifically using it to create jet fuel. Uh, so it's a, it's a great alternative. Uh, grows very quickly um, in and out of the ground under 100 days. Uh, very easy to process. Um, it seems to work very well in the Hawaiian soils once, once uh, you figure out a good, a good planting practice. Um, this is a crop here, it's just finished seeding. We're about maybe uh, 15 days away from harvest, so you can see the flowers at the top and then the seed pods forming underneath. Once this um, seed is harvested, a combine will come in and harvest the top of the seeds. It'll be dried down to about a 12% moisture content. Then at that point, it'll be put into a seed press or an expeller, and they'll actually press the oil out of it. That oil then would go to the refinery, Pacific Biodiesel Technologies refinery at Sand Island, or the new one that's being built on the Big Island. They would process it there and then return the biodiesel fuel. We practice what we preach, so all the equipment, including Big Red, the truck next to me here, uh, is running on 100% biodiesel. Also, a recent event that we did in local North Shore community is we partnered up with the Volcom Surf Contest, uh, which is held over at uh, Pipeline, and where they're using 100% uh, biodiesel in their generators. Um, so just kind of a neat way to tie in to, we've got the farm here, and then behind you, you've got the, you know, the surf and the beaches, and it's tying here to local community as well. Uh, one of the additional benefits of the crops that we're growing right now, obviously 
we want to capture the oil for converting it into biodiesel. But the other product that comes out of producing these crops is called seed cake. So after we process the seeds, the leftover material is the remaining seed cake. And this has a high protein level, which could be a very good uh, animal feed supplement. By doing some of these initial test trials, um, obviously 10 to 20 acres, we're not gonna have a whole lot of yield from that. So what we're looking to do is to get that initial research and data and put that together in information that we can share with other farmers and other groups throughout the state. So hopefully other groups that have access to land, access to other resources, can take this information and it can be uh, a good resource and a good alternative rotational crop for some of the other cash crops that they're already growing.